Hey there. Um, it's Wednesday morning, so good Wednesday morning to you. So here, let me tell you where we are with the pistons. So the piston works fine, except we've got a real engineering flaw. So what I found is this ring, now remember, going back a video or two, remember that I didn't get the stepped rings back from the chrome plater, so I used uh, a regular pinned ring. So the pin that I put in, since the the bottom of the piston you know screws up into it, has to be above this surface. So it's about ten thousandths into the dome of the piston. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Ten thousandths past the the one millimeter point, so there's about a ten thousandths gap between the bottom of the locating pin and the top of the ring surface. So there's a little bit of room there. But what I found with this ring, and you can't really see it, is the pin, locating pin, started to fret against that shoulder that locates that ring. So what does that tell us? What that tells us is the that where the pin is, which is on the load side of the piston, is opening up. Because it's allowing that pin, or that ring, to just, I think, just get underneath the locating pin as it opens up. So uh, conversely, on the other side, it has to be trapping the ring. So this is not real, real usable. So let's look at our piston. Now, thinking about this, it, you know, and obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's easy to see that we've got a lever arm here, and so we've got, as our connecting rod on the compression is pushing this down, the rod is trying to push this boss over where our skirt is in the bore. So it makes sense that it's squishing that open. And then on the other side, squishing it close. We're trapping the ring. So my game plan is, and, and it's twofold, and it's still just sort of in my head right now. I haven't started laying it out yet. So I'm going to get rid of this focal point of the stresses going through this. And I'm going to lower it down in the piston. So how I'm going to do that and still keep it pretty lightweight is going to be a little bit difficult, but I think we can, we can do it. We're going to have to be a little bit tricky with some of the machining and have to do some, a little bit of undercutting to get rid of some of the weight. But I'm going to move the threads and that focal point for the wrist pin and the energy going through the wrist pin into the skirt itself and eliminate that it's focal point is right where that ring gap is. That's going to be its own separate thing. Now we still need to use the trapped ring, so I'm thinking that maybe a washer. Uh, my nose is itching. Hold on. Um, a washer and have the focal point down a little bit. Uh, whether that will still rock and push the washer up and trap the ring, I might have to put another shoulder that separates those two. So this is going to make a piston that's already a little tricky to make a little bit more tricky to make. But that's okay. I think I, I, I'm happy with how everything is going. If you look at the wear, I think we got it down. I mean, we've got beautiful wear all the way around it. It's not at the top like it was where I was expanding too much. It's pretty much uniform all the way around. So I'm really happy with it. It looks good. Um, so I think we're in pretty good shape uh, dimension-wise. I just need to get rid of this engineering flaw, um, which I think we can do. So we're going to test out some, some new ideas there. Um, in the meantime, I'm racing at El Mirage. The, the pinned standard ring situation which I have is obviously not going to work. Um, it'll work for a little while, but this fretting at some point is going to, it, it's going to move that ring around it and it's going to catch a port. It's going to be a disaster.
So that's out of the question. So luckily, like, like I had the problem before uh, that I didn't get the, the, the trapped rings, the teed rings back from the chrome plater, I've got them now. So I'm gonna finish them, put those in the engine with the two pistons I have, now that's not a long-term solution, but maybe I can uh, go out and make some passes, maybe get a record, or if not, we can find out maybe some more clues um, in this whole process, this whole learning process of, of sorting this uh, difficult piston out. Um, but anyway, that's my game plan. Put the trap ring in, run it uh, this weekend, and see where we are, and then spend next winter revising and and changing the piston design enough that we can get rid of this this issue i think that that's about it uh i want everybody to keep working on their own projects keep kicking ass because that's what we're you know here to be doing is trying to go fast and make cool shit um alex from two stroke uh, stuffing came by um you know, because uh, World Finals ended up being rained out, but he came by, came by the shop. He's uh, just as genuine and smart and inquisitive a, a guy as you see on his videos, so it was an absolute pleasure to have him come by and work with him, and, and yeah, he's a great guy. So that was cool, and, um, and then we're going to try and run El Mirage. I'll try to get some video footage out there. El Mirage, we haven't run all year long because of the rain has um, created trenches right through the race course. But they've been going out and packing those grooves back in with, with dirt. And it, they're saying it looks okay. So fingers crossed. I'm... For my club duties, I need to go down and set up cones anyway. So I'll bring the bike, and fingers crossed, we actually get to get some, some racing in. Um, and I think that that's it. I think we've covered everything. So have a, a great time until the next video, which I imagine it might be a little bit until I get a chance to redesign it. I'll redesign it in the next couple weeks and then show you what I'm doing. But anyway, uh, thank you, and uh, keep keep... Uh, rolling, keep watching. Okay, bye.